Martinez, and Martinez, a great star with the Montreal Expos, will get this game underway with Kenjiro Nomura leading off the shortstop, a 288 hitter with 14 homers and 63 runs batted in for the Hiroshima Carp, and the first pitch is slapped foul out of play, I think. Racing over for it is Walker, and he gets to it. Yeah, Walker makes the catch. What a catch. He climbed the wall to get that. Oh, my. That was a sparkler right off the bat. Look at this one. Whoa. <laughs> Martinez looking for a new ball. He figured that was out of play. Yeah. <laughs> Where in Canada is Walker from? Must be near the Rocky Mountains. <laughs> yeah, he can climb them, I guess. That was a sparkling play by Walker. That brings up Tatsunami, the second baseman, a 301 average with five homers and 42 RBIs this year. And he takes the first pitch for a ball. So we're underway in the fourth game of the eight-game set. Up to this point, the Major League All-Stars have won all three. And that pitch is on the outside corner for a strike. Martinez for Montreal this year won 16 games, lost 11 with a 2.47 earned run average. Six complete games and 226 in the third innings. Big curveball, he's big pitch, although he's wide with the, looks like the changeup that time. Tough to hit pitcher, uh, 212 the average against him, both lefty and righty, as you see Akiyama on deck. Martinez back to the plate. That one stays up. If you missed our first telecast, you are seeing the kilometer per hour mark, a trademark of Japanese baseball, and we are getting our video from NTV, Nippon TV, and we'll convert some of those for you for miles an hour, and that ball is slapped to the right side, racing over four to Sierra, and he's not going to be able to get to that one. That's a big strike. Basically, you saw 135 the last time. That will translate to right almost exactly 83.7 miles an hour. If you're looking for speed, the magic number is 146. That's 90.52, or you could round off 145 to 89.9 to 90. So that's, that's what you're looking for if you want to gauge the speed of the pitchers in this one and you're not familiar with kilometers. That's fouled away. We had a brief glimpse of uh, Hara, the uh, Yomiuri Giants first baseman who's coaching first tonight since he's not in the lineup. Our last telecast, Tahara should uh, have stayed in the lineup. He had a couple of hits. That was the first game of the series between the two all-star teams. Of the three games that the American-based major leaguers have won, two of them are against the all-stars and one against the Yomiuri Giants. And Martinez gives a pass to Tatsunami. Martinez... Uh, Normally pretty stingy with walks. Last season, in 1992, only walked 60 in 226 in the third innings. But after the layoff from the end of the season and before this series started, you can expect a little control problem. As we take a look at Koji Akiyama, who in our last telecast was the leadoff man, and he did the job. He had three hits and five at-bats. And he's wearing the uh, Cebu Lions away uniform today since the uh, Jap Japanese All-Stars are the visiting team. This series traditionally has allowed the two teams to trade the advantage of batting last, even though all eight games, of course, played in Japan. Strike one called. There's a popular guy. We'll talk about him when he comes up. Ochiai, a big slugger, had some injuries this year, but fan favorite with the Dragons. There's a swing through it and a miss. There's a bigger crowd here in the Dome tonight than there was last time we broadcast. Some uh, 50,000 or so fans tonight. I think last time we were around the 40,000 mark. Getting uh, accurate attendance figures in uh, the Tokyo Dome is really as difficult as it is in some ballparks in the major leagues in the United States. The official word is that the regular capacity is about 43,000 with room for three or 4,000 standees, yet when they have a flat-out sellout, they call it over 50. At least that's the word that we'd gotten from uh, an insider that said that's what the fire department says. And you don't know how many people have the tickets and aren't there, much as happens uh, sometimes in National Football League games along the states. This game is being televised in Tokyo and in much of Japan, so that sometimes can have an effect. Martinez is a throwback to the old school with that big chaw in the mouth. <laughs> trying to keep Tatsunami close at first. That one was a little bit of a hanger, and it's 
looped over to the right side out of play. Tatsunami is uh, a graduate of P.L. Gakuen High School in Osaka, which is one of the powerhouse high schools in Japan, perennial uh, winner of the um, high school tournaments that are held twice a year in Koshien Stadium in Osaka, and there's a lot of pros that come out of P.L. Gakuen High School. Martinez working again. He's taking a look over to first base with Tatsunami perched there. We're in the top of the first inning. Swung through the breaking ball, and he'll go sit down. That's the second out. Nice curveball by Martinez. That's his big pitch. And here comes Hiromitsu Ochiai, the designated hitter from the Chinichi Dragons. Now, folks in the United States are well aware that's a popular team because that is the team that Tom Selleck was a fictitious player for in the movie Mr. Baseball, which uh, is to be hitting Japan in December, but has been in the United States since uh, October. But Ochi is the real thing. Yeah, Ochi spent most of his career with the uh, Lotte Orions from the Pacific League in the Japan Major Leagues. He's now with the Chinichi Dragons since 1987, which is in the Central League. And in that time, he has amassed with his 22 home runs in 1992, some 435 home runs over 14 seasons. He saw a brief look at a number 11 with the Emory Giant uniform on. Well, that is our starting pitcher tonight, Masaki Saito. The bullpens here at the Tokyo Dome are out of sight. They're under the stands. And uh, in Japanese baseball, it is all right for the pitchers to... Uh, Take some extra tosses out in front of the dugout. There's a runner to throw down to second. It's an easy stolen base. Actually hit Tatsunami in the back as it bounced in the dirt. Actually, the fact that it hit him uh, may have worked against him. He had the base stolen easily, as you see here. Nice jump. But had it not hit him, he might have had a chance to go all the way to third. And this is a good, a good indicator uh, tonight uh, in this game. The Japanese are coming out very aggressive and actually trying to steal a base in the first inning. Very uncharacteristic and perhaps uh, it's um, going to foreshadow things to come. Martinez working again from the stretch. And his fastball is high. His fastball so far hasn't had quite, uh, quite the speed he would like. Right around 86 is his top. Now he's not an overpowering pitcher even in mid-season, but he's got to get a little bit closer to 90. Her ball is away. Of course, Ochi is a, a legend in Japan, not only for the fact that he's uh, been an MVP twice and led the league in home runs on numerous occasions, the Pacific League and RBI leader, but also for his attitude and approach to the game. It's much looser and more nonconformist than uh, just about every other player in the, in the major leagues in Japan. Yeah, some would say sort of an American-type attitude brought to Japan, but already held by a Japanese. This time, though, it uh, didn't help as he... Grounds out the short. We played the top of the first inning. We will take a look at the lineups and get the bottom of the inning, and we'll see what Saito can do on the mound against Major League Baseball when we return. And hitting second, Ken Griffey Jr. hitting third in center field. Cecil Fielder, the designated hitter in the cleanup spot, followed by Mark Grace at first base. Ruben Sierra in right field. Walker, the left fielder, Larry Walker. My Mickey Tettleton, the catcher, and hitting ninth, the shortstop, is Travis Fryman. Okay, defensively for the uh, the Japanese in the outfield, we have uh, in left field, Tetsuya Ida, in center field, Koji Akiyama, in right field, Norihiro Komada. Around the infield at first base, it's Hiro Ishii. Second base will be Kazuyoshi Tatsunami. At shortstop, Kenjiro Nomura. Over at third base, Kaoru, Kaoru Okazaki. And on the behind the plate is, of course, uh, Atsuya Furuta, and on the mound, is Saito Masaki. Saito Masaki, 27 years of age, a 10-year veteran, all with the Yomiuri Giants. This year, he led the Central League in victories with 17. He was 17-7 and seven with a 2.59 ERA. And he faces Wade Boggs, who takes the first pitch upstairs. Boggs, uh, during the season past, uh, dropped under 300 for the first time ever as he fouls the ball back to the screen. Saito has been a very good pitcher for the Giants uh, for the last several years. 
And once again, uh, the hopes rest that he will be on target. He won those 17 games, as Dick mentioned, 12 of them complete. Solid pitcher. He's got 97 victories in 10 seasons, so uh, he's got most of those in the last two years. Nice play by Ishii at first and covering Sancho, and that retires Boggs. Whoa, a long way for him to go at first base. He's a big man. He doesn't move very fast, but he's got good reflexes, and he just flattened himself out on the ground to secure that one. Here it is again. He got as far as he could go, and he flattened himself. You're right. <laughs> His lead toss was almost a behind toss, but uh, Saito was able to handle it, and that takes care of Boggs. Here's Carlos Baerga now will be the next hitter. Baerga, the second baseman, star for the Cleveland Indians, a team up and coming, hit 312 with 20 homers and 105 runs batted in this year. Breaking ball catches the outside corner. Our umpires, or umpire behind the plate, I should say, is from the Pacific League, and you can tell their distinctive, well, rather unconventional garb. Summary might be a, a good adjective. The uh, Pacific League umpires, who you'll also see, uh, more traditional with the gray slacks and regular shirt, white shirt, solid color. <laughs> well, the Central League is the older league, and uh, the Pacific League is the junior circuit. There's a shot toward the middle, dropping in for a base hit as Baerga has the first hit of the ball game and the second base runner. Each team has had one now in the first inning. First hit off Saito, and let's take a look at, we can tell what the pitch was. Well, it looked like he was trying to tail away from him, but he didn't tail far enough, and Baerga just lifted it right over the middle. Yep, hit it solidly, and... Uh... Like the last game we telecast, uh, the Japanese pitcher is getting hit in the first inning, although um, Saito has just been nicked for a single, nothing like Nomu, uh, Nomo, rather, uh, when uh, Fielder crashed that home run off him. Ken Griffey Jr., the hitter, got to watch by Erga. He can run. He didn't run a, run a lot for Cleveland last year, but he was successful uh, 10 out of 12 times. Peruta has already shown to have a great arm throwing out base runners. In our last telecast, he was two for two. It's interesting, looking at those boots that uh, Bayerga is wearing, those high-topped uh, shoes, they haven't caught on yet in Japan. Yeah, but they probably will, but I think they're ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Griffey's got them on, too. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I'll tell you about something that has caught on here in a minute. That's a strike. It's, uh, it's actually as simple as, as uh, the number on the uniform. In Japan now, uh, suddenly the the rage has become to have the number zero or the number number double zero it's become almost it's become actually a standard issue uniform number now double zero <laughs> ken griffey jr the mvp of this all-star tour two years ago and he takes that pitch inside ken uh, like cecil fielder knows some of these players and some of the pitchers he's seen them before or cecil knows them best cecil's kind of the the tour guide for this group having played here in 1989 and on the All-Star Tour two years ago and now back again. He enjoys it, too. He's able to go meet some of the guys around the batting cage that uh, play in Japan. Some of them can speak some English, and those that can't, they can talk through interpreters and then get along well. There's a shot. Right side, moving over for him, making the catch. Here's Komada. The big guy tries to pull behind the runner, but Bayarga gets back. Well, Komada, maybe not noted for his speed or glove, had enough of both that time. Yeah, that was a beautiful play by Kamada in the outfield. And uh, I know in the last broadcast, I remarked a bit about uh, the sometimes dicey way that uh, outfielders play uh, in Japan. Um, but there, he, he running laterally, he extended himself and made a nice catch. Where I've seen Japanese outfielders have a bit of trouble is coming in on balls. Well, that was a good one going laterally, and it keeps Griffey on the, off the base, and that's what you want to do, because if you were our... One of our viewers in the first game, you saw a situation where Cecil came up with two on in the first, and he unloaded them. He's got a runner at first base with two out. Cecil Fielder and the breaking ball, the slider away for ball one. And you can bet that Nomo, the uh, pitcher in the last uh, game that we telecast, has been sharing uh, his observations with uh, Saito about how to pitch to these uh, Major League All-Stars. Cecil, when he played in Japan in 1989 for the Hanshin Tigers, hit 30... Eight home runs with a 302 average and 100, or rather 81 RBIs in just 106 games. He takes it for a strike. Cecil, 
up to that point had not made a mark in Major League Baseball. He'd been with Toronto, but there was a guy named Fred McGriff playing in front of him, and Freddie has proven to be a very solid all-star. Cecil proved himself in Japan and got the contract to come back to play for the Detroit Tigers. There's a strike at the knees. Well, he's kind of um, set a new trend. I mean, uh, before Fielder, most of the players that came to Japan were either uh, past their prime in the States or had no hope of cracking the starting lineup. Well, Fielder fit that mold at the beginning, but then he actually broke it by going back to the States and excelling, even doing much, much better than he did before. Now the pattern is that pitch is low. Here's the throw down, trying to steal by Erga. Oh, he's there. Here's Ball nice. gets away, and going into third base is by Erga. He'll get a stolen base and go to third on the error. Right through the legs of the infielder covering second base there. Tom Kelly, the manager of the Twins, the third base coach and manager here. Here's the play. Could have had him. The ball was not thrown well. And it'll be an error on the catcher, but it's one of those situations where it should have been blocked, and if it had been a good throw, it would have been more than that. He would have had it if the throw had not been in the dirt. Yeah, that was uh, Kazuyoshi Tatsunami of the Junichi Dragons covering from second base. So Fielder has a chance to drive in a run the old-fashioned way with just a mere single as he's up with two outs. Trying to pitch him away. Slider chopped at the left side. Moving over for it is Nomura. He's got a lot of time. Cecil doesn't exactly motor. And that retires the side. So we've gone through one. There is no score. Major League Baseball touring Japan. A stolen base, Larry Walker. Now Larry's got some speed. And he saw that Saito really didn't pay that much attention to him, so he took advantage of it. And again, you had to look at the quickness of Furuta behind the plate. Although he didn't uh, throw Walker out, he was up on his feet before he even caught that ball. And he really got himself in position nicely. A lot of the good base stealers will tell you third base is usually easier to steal because you can usually gain it by surprise. At first base, they're always paying attention to you. Well, there's always stealing home plate as well. And done. <laughs> Fryman at the plate now, trying to see if he can get him in the old-fashioned way. Outside corner, you think? Oh, well, you can't bring it back that far. He was set up way outside, then the pitch was close enough to the plate, I think, uh, that Peruta thought, what the heck? I don't think he really was planning on throwing a strike on that. When it came in close enough, he said, well, okay, we'll give it a shot. The trouble was, his glove was the only thing behind the plate. <laughs> <laughs> so, Fryman... Trying to dig in and carefully watch this one aiming inside at the knee, and that's fouled away. You'll notice the target that Fruta is giving. It is all over. He's trying to not shift into that target until it's too late for any would-be hitter to peek. Very cagey. Yeah, because more often than not, the position of the target will also tell you what the pitch is going to be. If you're away, a lot of times... Uh, well, if you're inside, it's not going to be a curveball. Let's put it that way. Outside could be either pitch, but if you're inside, it's not going to be a curve. Now, this could be either. Well, that was a breaking ball. Caught the outside corner, and Fryman is the second out. And he's been called out on strikes twice. So that was a snappy little curve by Saito as well. Kept it low. There it is, the late break, little low, little drop break, and that's all for Fryman. And there are two outs, and Wade Boggs will be the hitter. It looks like the Pacific League umpires, uh, as well as having a flamboyant guard. Balls and a strike. Runner at third base is Larry Walker. He singled, got the second on a throwing error by the third baseman Matsunaga, went to third on a stolen base. And Wade Boggs carefully watching the pitch. Wade uh, tried glasses a little bit during the Major League season. He had his vision tested and found he wasn't 2010 anymore. He'd fallen out to uh, normal human standards. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't wear them. I'm not sure if he has contacts on now or not. I know a couple of players you know, working the games with the Texas Rangers, uh, Rafael Palmero had tried glasses for a while and didn't like them after the first time. Never used them. 
Well, there was one game I called um, this season for the Hanshin Tigers. The catcher, who had been in the pros for some 10 years, wore glasses for the first time and hit a game-winning home run. That will change one's attitude toward them, I would Yes. Say. Shares the Tokyo Dome as the home ballpark. And uh, Cecil Fielder gets a ground ball up to short. Nomura over to first, and Ishii takes it up the line and tags him out. Kaneshi is uh, 32 years old. He's also a graduate of P.L. Gakuen High School in Osaka, 14-year veteran. He played originally with the Hiroshima Cup. And now we look at Saito being interviewed below the stands, taking the place of um, Ochiai, who last held the spotlight. Last, uh, in 92, Kaneishi was 14-12 and 12 with a 3.77 ERA and 28 appearances. He's uh, one of those two players that will only participate in this game of the series, and so they're taking advantage of that. And the first pitch is a strike to Mark Grace. Grace has walked and singled. Good-looking young hitter. Mark really happy to be on this trip. He's on this trip with the fellow major leaguers, many of them all-stars. And this, te this team, of course, like the Japanese team, does not necessarily represent the all-star teams or team of the league, but they're representative players. This guy, of course, uh, Saito can represent the Tokyo Giants many times. He's done a, he had a fine job. He went five innings, gave up, uh, let's see, looks like only, let me count him up. I didn't total his thing. Well, five hits, two earned runs. Walked three, struck out three. Did a nice job. Kept his team right in the game. And that pitch is down. Currently, we have a uh, all-Nippon ham battery here with Kaneishi on the mound. And That's a right. new catcher for the uh, uh, replacing Furuta is uh, Tamura of the Nippon ham fighters. Taking over defensively. Tamura has pretty much already the catching with uh, Furuta so far. That ball's hit well by Grace. Coming in hard and making the play, however, in center field is Akiyama. Grace continues to hit the ball on the button, but this time, no luck. Two outs. And the hitter will be Ruben Sierra. Everything being equal, he'd kind of like to be an Oakland A again, but everything being equal. Down to the lower portion. Of course, all these guys are capable of getting it done. They're all strong hitters, but you can get past Griffey and Fielder. That makes you feel a little better. Akahori also has that kind of hesitation motion where he, he'll keep that leg lifted uh, momentarily before he continues with his uh, delivery. Foul ball. Big Sess. He, too, has contractual things to be thinking about while in Japan. Although I'm sure, like most of them, he tries not to think of it any more than necessary. Tigers want to sign him for big bucks. That's a ball. Right around 88 miles an hour on that one, a little bit under. Foul ball down the third base side. Akahori's 22 saves actually made him the uh, Pacific League save leader this year. The Japanese have an interesting statistic for saves. It's not just um, saves alone are not only counted in it, it's also um, victories count uh, towards what they call save points. And uh, anyway, however you slice it, Akahori was at the top of the pack for the Pacific League. That ball is hit well, but not well enough for Major League Baseball to keep it going in this inning as it's hauled in in right field. That retires the side. One, two, three. Akahori gets it Three. He has struck out twice, and he takes that fastball inside. One ball. We'll have another game in this series. In fact, we'll have two more games in the series. The last two of the series. They'll play a couple of games uh, out of Tokyo Dome and then come back to wrap up the series, and we'll be on the air with those for you. And those are always significant because you got some individual awards some of the players are going for, and it'll be interesting to see how the series stands at that point. Looks like it's going to be three games to one in favor of the uh, Major League Stars after this one. You know, this could be the turning of the tide, though, the way the Japanese have uh, decisively turned it around tonight. 
inside again as he's trying to jam him with the fastball. A lot of times pitchers who don't have overpowering fastballs, that's where they throw it. They, they try to nibble on the outside, but more than likely they'll try to throw in because when you throw inside, it gives your fastball the effectiveness of being a little quicker. Batter has to react, and that is a strikeout, and that is it. For you to come back here every couple of years. Well, I think uh, this time definitely has been more pleasant than the last, but, you know, it's always good to be able to come back over and extend, you know, Major League Baseball uh, into another country and show that, you know, we're still definitely the, the best baseball that is played. So I think this trip has been like that. The last trip wasn't, but, you know, this trip has showed that, you know, we get the right mixture of people together and we go out there and play hard, we can win the ball games. Two other quick questions on a separate note. One uh, has to do with uh, the uh, the players in the Japanese team. Now, these are people that you know well because most of the players in the Japanese team have been around for quite a while. Well, yes, I, I, I get along, you know, with everybody. And, uh, you know, while I was here, my stay here was definitely pleasant. I know a lot of people and became friends with a lot of people. So, you know, to come back and, and get a good reception from the people here and, and the Japanese players is definitely uh something that I, I really truly enjoy baseball now will be over for the year for you you got to start thinking about that ugly stuff called contracts well it's been going on and I tell you it, it hasn't been too pleasant because of the fact that a lot of things are being talked about us being locked out again but you know that's just you know the way uh, business is you have to understand that baseball is also a business there's a business side of it and you know both sides are definitely going to try to work out a, a something that is definitely suitable for, for both sides and hopefully uh, the Detroit Tigers and my people can get something together and work it out soon. On the pitcher's mound for today's game, Mark Langston of the California Angels for the Major League Baseball team against Hiromi Makahara, a hard thrower from the Yomiuri Giants. The action is coming up and Dick Neeskins is upstairs. He'll be joining me once again on the telecast. Thanks a lot, Greg. Dick Neeskins with you once again upstairs at the Tokyo Dome, the Big Egg as they call it here in Japan, where we get set for another contest between the American and Japanese All-Stars. Now the Japanese, although they've lost four games up to this point, four out of six games, they have to rest their hopes for tonight squarely on the shoulders of their starting pitcher, Hiromi Makihara of the Yomiuri Giants, who has a major league assortment of pitches, including a curveball, a split-fingered fastball, and a regular fastball that he throws about 90 miles per hour, over 140 kilometers per hour. So we'll see if he can do the job for the Japanese tonight. We'll be back with the lineups and the start of this game in just a bit. We're in Tokyo Dome. Well, we're getting set for action. Let's take a look at the Japan's starting batting order. Leading off for the Japanese tonight is Kenjiro Nomura, playing shortstop. He's from the Hiroshima Carp. Batting second, moving up in the order today, is Atsuya Furuta, the catcher of the Yakult Swallows. Batting third, Koji Akiyama, the center fielder from the Cebu Lions, who's having a great series. Batting in the fourth position, Hiromitsu Ochiai, the veteran designated hitter from the Chunichi Dragons. In the fifth position, Hiro Ishii, the first baseman from the Kintetsu Buffaloes. In the sixth slot, Tatsunori Hara, the left fielder from the Yomiuri Giants. Batting seventh, Takahiro Ikea the third baseman of the Yakult Swallows. Batting eighth, Tetsuya Ida in right field for the Yakult Swallows also. And in the ninth position, Hatsuhiko Tsuji, the second baseman of the Cebu Lions. Defensively for Major League Baseball, which of course will be the home team again in this game, uh, in the outfield, left to right, Larry Walker in left field, Ken Griffey Jr. in center field, Ruben Sierra will be in right. Defensively on the infield, Wade Boggs is at third, Ozzie Smith at short, Carlos Baerga at second, and uh, Mark Grace will be at first base with Darren Dalton catching, and the pitcher is Mark Langston. There you see a close-up of uh, Mark. Mark is a big left-hander. We saw him earlier in the series, and he was effective. In fact, uh, he won that uh, ball game, went uh, four innings, 2.25 earned run average, uh, walking five, striking out five, a little bit off in his control, but many of the pitchers in their first outing here in this uh, series have been really in some part both both teams because eight of this series with two homers and six runs batted in that ball is low on the split finger fielder had a an off season at detroit this year in batting average but not in run production he drove in 124 runs 35 home runs and just uh, on just a 244 batting average so he hit him when he had to 
Didn't he set some kind of record for, for runs batted in, like the third consecutive year of leading the majors in RBIs? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he was the American League leader in three successive years with 132, 133, and 124. That's the first time that's been done since Babe Ruth. You see Tom Kelly, the manager of the Twins and the manager of this Major League Baseball team, coaching at third. What's amazing about Fielder is he had that kind of production after playing a year in Japan and then coming back to the States. And before he uh, played in Japan, he wasn't, well, he was sort of a spare part. He'd never really broken through with Toronto. But he uh, perked the eyes and ears of the Tigers of Detroit with his play with the Han Shin Tigers. Another close play, Griffey back. There's a, a, a much more open uh, exchange of, of scouts and information across the Pacific nowadays with the Japanese looking for higher quality players from America to poach to bring over. That gets away. Griffey's going to go into second base. That's a throwing error. Griffey takes the turn. He's going to keep going to third. And Griffey goes into third base on the throwing error by the pitcher, Makahara. Wow, he just went over one too many times. And it was the second baseman that had to chase that ball down in no man's land in the right field foul area. Suji. Hmm. Well, that gives, uh, here, let's take a look at it. The throw is just not good, and she had to dive for it, couldn't get to it. And there is a lot of foul territory here at the Tokyo Dome. It is very, very spacious between the baselines and the stands, and there was no chance. In fact, it looks even more spacious than maybe uh, it would ordinarily because the bullpens are not located within sight. They are, you know, you talk about some places where you can't see them. They're not anywhere in sight. They're under the stands here. Well, that adds an extra element of mystery to this. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. <laughs> Who's warming up? Who knows? Is there anybody warming up? Who knows? Well, it's a little more tough to second guess the manager of, for the home team if you don't know what he's doing. <laughs> well, knowing this is Japan, there's probably a television camera in there and a little monitor in each of the dugouts so they can tell. That's what they have in Toronto for the uh, Blue Jays. They, their pins are not totally hidden, but they almost are, and so that's what they have. Cecil takes a strike. Cecil Fielder, a big fellow. Very popular with his Major League Baseball teammates and also a number of the Japanese fans and people that remember him from 89. Swing and a miss on a 144-kilometer fastball. That's just a tick under 90. 89.9 when you convert it. Yeah, Makihara, sneaky fast. He um, set Fielder up for that. I think he wasn't expecting a fastball that velocity. Fielder looks again at the pitch. That one he takes inside. He's on with a base on balls. And Cecil Fielder draws the walk. That's two runners now. Runners at first and third. They have a good... Uh, microcosm of how Makihara works and how he worked the fielder. He's, he's not overpoweringly fast, but he mixes his pitches very well. He has a good breaking pitch and is sneaky with the fastball. Here's Mark Grice, who's had a nice season. Though the Major League Baseball Club had a couple of base runners, they leave them both. We've played one, and there's no score. Japan and Major League Baseball. Right. Well, Makihara, I don't think is the sort to be rattled by uh, even back-to-back -back homers. He'll, he'll hang in there. Well, that's, that's his biggest problem right there we just saw. He's just not getting the fastball for strikes. He's not missing by a whole lot, but he's missing, and uh, then he changes his variety of pitches, and he gets in trouble with bad hanging fork balls. That ball is slashed foul. Could be as well now that it's the second time round in the order that they see what he's got and uh, they're able to work him for what they would like to hit. Take a look at the Major League Baseball players on the bench and the third base line. Third base side is traditionally the visitor's side in Japan. The fans who come to cheer for the visiting team always sit on the third base side. In Major League Baseball, it uh, pretty much depends on the layout of the field and the way the clubs like to do it. There's the next pitch to Dalton. That's fouled back. There are a number of teams that have their dugouts on the first base or, or third base side, depending on uh, what they prefer. I, I'm thinking, I'm trying to mentally go through a, a number of teams 
uh, right now, and I can think of a couple that I know for sure that have their dugouts on the third base side, the Chicago Cubs. I think the White Sox do as well. There's a high pop-up. Texas Rangers and the Houston Astros for two have theirs on the other side. Oh, look out! Oh! That was Nomura. Oh, and he's such a good fielder usually. On the high pop-up, he lost it. And I'll tell you what they're doing right now. They're not cheering Nomura. They're cheering Dalton because he finally got a hit. And, they've, yeah, they've given him a hit on this. The scoreboard says hit, and maybe, let's put it this way, should have been caught, but he's getting a hit. Well, it's, it's that vast <laughs> swirling wind inside the dome here. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, if, you're, if you need a hit, that's how you get him. Here's Ozzie Smith, chopper. First base side, fair ball, and it's played by Ishii, and that retires the side. Well, it was a productive inning in the bottom of the third for Major League Baseball. Five runs, the big story, a three-run homer by Ruben Sierra and a solo homer by Larry Walker. We'll be back with the top of the fourth in just a moment. Player, I just can't identify him right now. It's a slider away to Fryman. Fryman is coming up for the first time in this ball game. He came in for Ozzie Smith, who finished two for three. Take a look at the, the uniqueness of the Japanese dugouts is they are generally two rows. There's a bouncing ball out to the second baseman, and Suji makes the play, and that's quickly a one, two, three, bottom of the seventh. We're going to the eighth. It's nine, four in favor of the major leaguers over the Japan pros. We'll be back.